Okay, this video will be over on um, summing over sets. It won't be as long as the last couple of ones over the binomial coefficients and the summations. And there will not be um, not be a Wolfram Alpha demonstration at the end. So if you're already familiar with summing over sets, then you can go ahead and just skip this video. And all I'm going to do is go through an example here. This is this concept is going to be used theoretically. It's going to be used in a few of the proofs of um, of some of our statements in the class. It's not going to be used in our computations, um, but I do want to make you aware of how it works. So let's suppose I have a set, and I am going to assume that you're familiar with the set notation. So this is an unordered collection of objects in which I cannot have repetition. Uh, set S contains 1, 3, and 5, and the set T contains 2 and 4. If I want to sum over a set, the notation is similar. I'm going to sum, so I use a sigma. And instead of having k from one value to another, I want k, I want to sum over 1, 3, and 5, so I would put k in s. That's a, it's called, it's a Greek letter epsilon, it means n in the set, or is an element of the set. And I put a k out here. And what that means is, for each element of the set, we plug it in, and that's a term in our sum. Since I have three elements, there will be three terms, and it will be 1 plus 3 plus 5, since I'm just summing the values of the elements. And that happens to be 9. If I were to sum over all m and t of m squared, so that would be the sum of the squares, this would just have two terms because there's two elements of the set, and that would be 4 plus 16, which is 20. And the reason I really wanted to throw this in here, okay, those two examples aren't bad, but I wanted to show you what I'm going to mean when I sum over all k and s and m and t. Okay. That means all the combinations of some element from s and some element of t. And in this example, there's going to be six of them. You just multiply the cardinalities of the sets. And let's suppose I sum k times m. So that means I need to choose all the combinations of an el one element from s and one element from t. That can be 1, 2, that can be 1. 4, that could be 3, 2, that could be 3, 4, or it could be 5, 2, or 5, 4. Okay, so this is actually going to have six terms, and the terms are going to be the products. So it would be 2 plus 4 plus, I'm just multiplying these together, uh, plus 6 plus 12 plus 10 plus 20 is what the sum of all overall k and s and m and t of k times m would be. Okay, and that ends up being, let's see, you got 12, 24, um, 54, I believe. And as another example, um, actually this is going to be the same example, I'm just going to show that it can be written differently. Let's suppose I have the sum over all k and s of the sum over all m and t of k m. And what this means is I'm summing this. This is going to be my term for each value of k. Okay. Well, we know that constants can pull through, and when I'm summing over m, k isn't changing, so this looks like the sum over all k and s of k times the sum over all m and t of m. Okay. And I'm summing over this whole thing. So all I did was I pulled the k out there, because I'm not summing over k. So this is the sum over all k and s of k times the sum of the elements in t. Well, that's just 2 plus 4. That's 6. Okay. And that's 6 times the sum of the elements in s. That's a sigma there. Okay. So our result, 54, was just 6 times 9. 1 plus 3 plus 5. And what I'm doing here is I'm showing you that I can take this sum over all combinations of elements and rewrite it as a double sum. Sum one element first, in this case I'm summing over the m's and t first, and then sum over the k's and s's. We'll be using, uh, we'll be using that congruence, uh, those two different ways of representing the same thing in this course.